Uh, this lecture is going to be in English, okay? With some, uh, of course, some resources in Portuguese, but I hope these resources come to come from you. Yeah? First of all, I would like to ask you who here speak Portuguese? Like, with no problem, you can communicate. Okay. Among this, who speaks Brazilian Portuguese? And who is interested in learning Portuguese? Is already learning Portuguese or wants to start learning Portuguese? Great, which you? Have you already decided which uh, variant are you using? Or this is the reason why you came here? That's great. Um, well, Brazilian Portuguese. Brazilian Portuguese. To be honest, I won't uh, defend any of these variants. This is I'm exposing to you uh, in which the language differ, this variants differ, and it's up to you to make the choice. Okay? I have talking to people in European Portuguese and I have no problem with it. So one of the first things I think you may ask yourself is what the hell we Brazilians speak Portuguese? Because if you take a look. Uh, yes, this is in Portugal. This is like here, something like here, and Brazil is like here. <laughs> so it's a little bit far. I think even if I, someone could shout in Brazil, someone in Portugal wouldn't hear. <laughs> How do the, do the Portuguese language got here? Yeah, that's very strange. And I think you may know some history or stuff. But Brazil was once a colony of Portugal. We were colonized by Portuguese people. Yeah, so once in 500 years ago, a guy called uh, Pedro Alves Cabral went to a friend of him, the king of Portugal, <laughs> and asked some boats, some ships, to go until here to find some uh, interesting food, interesting uh, fabrics, and everybody who could turn into gold, because that was um, the fashion. And somehow, instead of going here, they went here. <laughs> yeah, they're not, they're not also, uh, very close to each other, but they arrived here and found uh, some products they could use. For instance, a kind of wood. Uh, they could make a, a painting, the red painting. And uh, in French, they got Brésil, because it seemed to be like, uh, how do you say, uh, carbon in Brazil. Something burning, yeah, charcoal burning, because it was red. So from Brazil, we have Brazil. Yeah. And okay, 500 years later, I think you see that it's quite uh, distant, because so <laughs> it's like 7,000, almost 7,500 kilometers. It's very far. To be honest, and I can say this because I came from here. <laughs> it's very, very far, yeah. And uh, the geographic isolation is one of the main reasons of those differences. And of course, as you can see, we have some influence of Africans, indigenous, German, Italian, Japanese, Jewish, and all sort of uh, people who went to Brazil. So we are very, in fact, we are a multicultural country. If you take a look, like, the difference between the regions are uh, as considerable as the difference between the countries. Yeah? So I will start with uh, the phonetical and phonological difference, because I think that's the easiest way, so I'll uh, turn things complex uh, within the time. The first difference is the rhythm of the languages. European Portuguese it's a stress time language. Well, Brazilian Portuguese is a syllable time language. What does this mean? The, the time, or the, the period of time between two stress syllables in European Portuguese must be the same. Uh, and in Brazil, we uh, do to, this, to the, all the syllables the same time, the same period of time. So, what consequence? The unstressed syllables in Europe and Portugal. Can you give some examples at the yeah. same time? Because I have no clue about like, how oh, I will show the example. I just need to, to give the, the main things. Yeah? As a consequence, the unstressed syllables in Europe and Portuguese will be shorter or sometimes even uh, deleted from the word. And in Brazil, we speak everything with the same 
uh, duration. So that's, I've heard some people here tell me, ah, I chose Brazilian and Portuguese because I can understand what they're saying. Yeah, because these people are slow. Yeah. And, Uh, I brought here some examples, I will come back to the other slide. So, I chose some sentences and I made the uh, phonetic transcription with IPA. So you can compare those who understand IPA and to those who don't understand IPA, I can read or I can ask some volunteer here to read to me in uh, he, him, his or her own variation. So, Maria, uh, you speak European Portuguese, how would you read this sentence? Portugal é um país bonito. So, Portugal é um país bonito. <laughs> bonito. Uh, Brazilian Portuguese would say Portugal <coughs> or Portugal. É um país bonito. And those uh, vowels between brackets are the vowels that uh, sometimes will be deleted. So, Portugal, Portugal, Portugal. É um país bonito. Portugal é um país bonito. Yeah? Uh, any other volunteer? I know uh, Maria speaks European Portuguese. Do you speak European Portuguese also? No. No? I can't. Oh, you can try it. Uh, I'm here for do all this to this technology. It's almost like this. It's really this. Uh, how can I say this? Very fast. A menina faltou teste de psicologia. O teste de psicologia. In Brazilian Portuguese. A menina faltou o teste de psicologia. A menina faltou o teste de psicologia. Yes, yes. We we're not uh, in a hurry to speak, so we can. <laughs> we can speak. Uh, a menina faltou by o teste de psicologia. Yes. Uh, you. You, you speak Brazilian Portuguese, right? So please read this sentence to me, the third one. O papel do estudante é rasgoso. Yes, o papel do estudante é rasgoso. In European Portuguese, o papel do estudante é rasgoso. 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 O papel do estudante é rasgoso. Rasgoso. Yeah, it's a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, looking at the IPA, you can see the difference. For example, o papel, o papel, o papel. Yeah? Uh, do, do student, do estudante, there is an E here, rasgoos, rasgoos, yeah? And the last one is a, a sentence from the Portugal anthem. I, uh, it's not, I'm not being a hypocrite here, I really like this anthem. And, no propovo no São Valente e Mortal. In the European Portuguese, in Brazil it's no propovo na São Valente e Mortal. Yeah? So you can see by the, these examples uh, the, the rhythm of the language. Yeah? And uh, I brought to you the vowel board. Yeah? So you can see the, the actual vowel that exists in both languages. So in Brazilian and Portuguese, you have E. This E, when it's not in the tonic syllable, the stressed syllable. Yeah? So pre tonic or post tonic. U, and this is same of this. E, O, E, O. This is a, a pre-tonic one. Ah, and we still have the shrub because the, the shrub. Not only the country is larger, even your vowel boards are larger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. I tried to to put on the same size, but uh, but you can manage. <laughs> I tried to. I confess. Yeah. Uh, in European Portuguese, there's e and im as a really a vowel, so not only a nasalization. U and um. And there is this uh, vowel that there is on Turkish. Yeah? This is a central U or almost that U without the rounded lips. So you try, basically try to say U with like smiling. <laughs> yeah, they say this or that can be this uh, one or the Russian one. Yeah, which is the central E. For example, the Portugal. The Portugal. The. The. It's not do or G. The Portugal. Yeah, and we don't have this in Brazilian Portuguese, thank God. E, M, O, O, A, 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 O, A. Yeah, this one maybe is the uh, biggest difference because it's really weird sound. Yeah? 
Very weird sound. Oh, which one? Yeah, this sound, yeah. Even in Turkish it's weird. And here some of the other letters that can differ uh, in a sentence. So, A in general you say A, but they can say A, uh, depending on the position. I, I'm not Maria, I'm Maria. Maria, yes, Maria. Maria. Because it's not in the stressed syllable, Maria. Uh, we say we have E and E, and they have E, E and U. Yeah. We have O, O, U, and they have O, O and U. It also depends on the uh, where this vowel is in the, in the sentence. We have ula and wow uh, when in the end of or end of syllable in general, and they don't have this wow in the same position. They have l and ola. It's a kind of retroflex l. They use, for example, Portugal. 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 While we say Portugal, we call uh, a small u. They say Portugal. Yeah? Our R's, uh, I'm considering here the. Uh, how can I say this? The compilation of Brazilian variation. Yeah? So we have this, uh, her, her, and her. And the English one is on uh, some final uh, interior uh, dialects. Yeah, it, it, of course there are some other kind of her, but to be more simple and practical. And they have this H, R, and R. So, for example, in the word carro, this uh, double R, we use this sound in the idea. Carro means uh, the car. Yeah? In Portugal, they say carro. Yeah, it's a okay. carro. Carro. Yes. But it depends on the. It, it depends, but they can say carro. Uh, and this word, for example, we've been extensive, uh, they would say caro. Yeah, so this sound is, in Portugal, is this, and here is this one. Okay. Wait, not in Brazilian Portuguese, the second? It's caro. The second one. It's caro. Oh, just like okay. this, yeah. Okay. I'm just uh, making a meaning with her. And S, we have just S, Z, and SH or Z, of course, and they have like S, Z, 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 Z. Yeah, the, they have a uh, more kind of S, yeah? So this one, and I think that's all. Do you have any question about the, this uh, difference? Uh, we have uh, nasalization, uh, Brazilian people in general speak with nose, and in Portugal it doesn't happen, just like in other uh, European languages in general, except French, Polish, yeah? There's none? Yeah, there, there are uh, nasal sounds, but with a specific diacritic, this one, yeah? But in, in Brazil, okay. if uh, there is a presence of a nasal, a nasal consonant, such right. as M, N, or the, the N, H, N, H, you can make another sound. So, yeah. for example, this word, <coughs> it means friend. In Portugal, we say amigo. But in Brazil, we say amigo. Amigo. There's no diacritic, but this M, uh, this A, assimilate the, the nasal uh, characters of this M. Yeah, that's why I'm then telling that we speak with our nose. Okay. So, <laughs> excuse me, is this an exception for Amigo? Or does it always happen when you have vowel and then you have... No, it's very frequent. It's very, frequent. Frequent. It's okay. very, very frequent. It's okay. not an exception. Yeah. In general, in Portugal, they do not nasalize by assimilation. And in Brazil, we do this a lot. For example, my uh, I try to uh, teach the final word M and N to my wife. And she always uh, tends to nasalize at the end of the words. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the syllable, so that it's really hard to get the correct pronunciation. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, sometimes it's a little bit difficult, especially in European languages, which in general don't have uh, this assimilation, right? I think that uh, sometimes we have, uh, I, I, I'm a Brazilian too, and sometimes we have this kind of uh, nasalization, for example, in some areas, and some we don't. 
Like, uh, for example, I'm from Minas Gerais. Uh, I stayed there. We say amigo, not amigo. amigo. Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, but, but we have some situations that, like, make maybe unconsciously we do this, but but we have no idea how. Yeah. For example, <laughs> if we say uh, gratuito, gratuito is like for free. Okay, a free book, livro gratuito. Uh, you, can you can you yes. write this? It's very funny because we don't have the, the letter M on the word. So we are supposed to say gratuito. Gratuito. So if we say like free book, gratuito. But I eat a lot. Eu como muito. We, 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 we say M M U I T O. But Ingratuito, we say gratuito, yes, but yes. we don't say muito, we say muito. Like we <laughs> 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 I don't know why this happens, but this, this, this is an assimilation because of mm. <laughs> yeah. So as I as I uh, said before, I'm not going to be uh, very detailed in, with all those Brazilian uh, difference because in our different regions it is from the center east I'm from north east so I think I speak more with more nasalization than he does yes. yeah? and people in the south in general speak almost like Portuguese people I think Daniel is not here uh, no there's a Brazilian girl here and she comes from the very very south and she speaks almost Spanish because it's so correct that it's almost not Portuguese anymore. Yeah. <laughs> there are, of course, I thank you for this example. It's amazing. Actually, on the point of the Uruguay, there are some uh, uh, dialects that are actually a, uh, a form of Portuguese. So it's really amazing. Yes, in the border, language. of course, it do happen. Yeah, of course. So uh, in in Brazil, we in general do not cut uh, the, the the words, uh, reduce them. And while in Europe and Portuguese, it's more frequent this. Uh, due to this uh, rhythm of the language. Okay? Uh, any questions, any comments? Yes? Yeah, if someone speaks uh, Brazilian Portuguese, for example, he goes to Spain and he says carro, you will understand that he means car or you will uh, Well, Sorry. we don't have this uh, multiple vibrant. So, so if some people say, if you want to, to know if someone who is speaking Spanish is Brazilian or not, ask to say but and don't. <laughs> because in Spanish they are different, but yeah. not all of Brazilian people can reproduce it. So uh, say but and dog. Uh, pero. Pero. Y pero. Y perro. Y perro is the correct. But most are saying pero y pero. Yeah. Because we don't have this sound. But uh, it will depend on the context. Yeah, because some words are different. There are the false friends between Portuguese and Spanish. So you have to be more specific in your questions. So, let's go to grammar differences. I didn't write too much because uh, I prefer to give here a written example of just to speak. But there are uh, grammar differences, although it's the same language. I hope you still believe it, but it's the same language. Uh, in the, the daily life, we speak in different ways. Uh, I think I said to some people here that in Portuguese, they usually speak the Portuguese is taught on the school. And in Brazil, we don't do this. So for example, uh, with this example here, they me, or me, that, it's an imperative, like give me. Yeah. Uh, in Portuguese, you should uh, conjugate this one according to, depending on the person, the second or the third one, and put the pronoun uh, after the verb with a, uh, how do you call it, hyphen? Hyphen, hyphen, yeah, thank you. With the hyphen. But in Brazil, we do this. We conjugate the verb in another person and put the pronoun before without hyphen. Yeah, so uh, both are accept, uh, I mean, according to the pronoun, both are acceptable. But in, we cannot start a sentence with this. So we cannot say
Vidam Siga, give me a cigarette. Yeah. We cannot start a sentence according to the grammar, the books, yeah, with uh, this pronoun. Yeah, give me a cigarette. We should uh, say, give me a cigarette. And why the verb is different? Because of to or was it? I explain a few moments. So, hold on. Yeah. So according to the books, we cannot start a sentence with this. But we in Brazil we do this daily. Every all day. The all the time. Yeah. All the time. All the time. You, you, if you ask a question, do you give me a cigarette? Yes. Or, you uh, yes. We just basically have. There are some rules that will make this pronoun goes after the verb or before the verb. In Brazil, we basically don't read these rules, so we speak basic like this. Yeah? And about the verb, this thing of two or we'll say. Uh, everybody here speaks Spanish. Uh, yes. So in Spanish, uh, there's also tu or usted. In, in Portuguese, it's basically the same thing. Uh, do you know where does it come from? From Yeah, like your your grace. Yes, it was a very formal treatment. And in Brazil, well, we were uh, colonized, so there are a lot of poor people and slaves and stuff. So everybody treats the others with a lot of respect. So people use a lot of also say, especially the black people, the slaves, with the white people, the Portuguese, uh, no, Brazilian, Brazilian people. And it, uh, it was going shorter and shorter. So, vossa mercê, vos mercê, vincê, vincê, você. And now these people write like this. <laughs> and in plural, like this. Some people say, yeah. Say yeah, that is also say. Yeah, I think my my children will speak like sir. Yeah. And for example, are you cadet? For example, are you cadet? Cadet? Yeah. Cadet. Yes, cadet. Sense actually immersed in one construction. Yeah, yes, cadet. Cadet. So, so uh, as a rule, we will conjugate verb with two in the second person. Yeah, as usual. And você is a third person because they use like a vocative. So I would say, Maria, você me disse, vai para onde? Maria, where are you going? But Maria, the, your grace is going to where? It would be something like this. And so traditionally, that's why you use with você the third person singular. And this one, as the imperative of the third person singular. Yeah? So we should say demi to tu, demi, but we say vida. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's one of the main differences people can notice when uh, okay. The other one is this thing. Estou fazendo, estou a fazer. This is a present continuum type. So I'm doing. Yeah, estou fazendo. We just like English, the verb to be and the, the other verb with the ing in, the, in Portuguese and the o. But Europe and Portuguese do not use this. They only use this with uh, a specific, specific context. For example, imagine that you, you're having your dinner and the phone rings. So you uh, answer it. Uh, hello, and what are you doing? If you said in Portuguese, there in Portugal. Estou jantando. I'm having my dinner. Estou jantando. It means that you were having your dinner before the person calls. You are having your dinner while the person is talking to you. And you spend like some days having your dinner after the person hangs up. Yeah, so in Portugal, they use estou a fazer. I'm to do. Or something like this. Yeah. Uh, in English, there is no direct translation. But it has, it has the same meaning, but with another form. And in Brazil, it's this like a uh, normal sentence. Yeah? Uh, so if you talk to a Portuguese people, Portuguese people in Portuguese, they use this form and not this form. And this is a Brazilian form. Yeah? Another uh, difference is uh, concerning to the preposition. In Brazil, we kind of destroy the idea of preposition. <laughs> yeah, for example, this one, full nice scholar. I'm going to the school. 
is the mean. It's, what is written here is I'm going in this form. Yeah? Maybe it comes from the Italian thing, because they use in uh, as two, right? But uh, it's a very common joke in schools when someone has to go to the bathroom to the teacher. Because if you say, uh,
Can you see the picture? So this is uh, a jellyfish, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Jellyfish. I forgot to look for the name. <laughs> That's why the picture is. Uh, in in Brazil we say água viva, like living water. Nos Açores é água viva. Nos Açores é água viva, beleza. In Portugal we say alforreca. We say água viva. Água viva. Alforreca. But also say medusa. Ah, yeah. Água viva is more frequent. Alforreca, if you say this in Brazil, it will have a kind of Meaning, it will mean that something is not very good. A oh, yeah. Because at least my city we have the word forreca, which means like poor or not really good. And in Portugal they say a oh, uh, I put here as so I chose some words that are just different and some words that can disturb communication. Yeah. I'd like especially uh, you to pay attention to this because this is important. This is a fruit, I think I'm here. We call Brazil Kaki, and they call it Diospi. I have no idea where. Diospi, Diospi, Diospi. We have gra grandma, the grass, yes. and they use uh, elva. And this is an interesting thing in Brazil because it's also the name of the weight. Yeah? Yeah, grandma. Uh, but in, in this is a grandma. Feminine. And the way this O grammar. Yeah. And it's very common to see in uh, places of people saying, for example, 500 grammas mm, of uh, education. Like 50, uh, 500 grammar of grammars of cheese. <coughs> if they say 500, like the male 500 grammas, they're asking for. Uh, half a kilo. But the, if they ask 500 grammars, they ask like 500 of this, they don't leave. <laughs> yeah? So yeah, that's different. This one, uh, how do you call this in English? That little... Oh, firefly. Firefly, firefly. firefly. yeah. We call vagalume, and they call luzicu. It's very strange to Brazil oh, because... Strange. Yeah, it's, uh, some people are recognizing because this last syllable of Luzicu means something not very good in Brazil. Yeah. That is also a, a big... I, I didn't put here, but it's also a different. They, I, I may talk to them, uh, I guess, sometimes. Is the that from a verb? Hmm? Is that from a verb? Probably. Yeah, like from Wonder. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. and Lumi, the, the light. Yeah. So this one is interesting. Banheiro e casa de we call this banheiro with a sink, with a bath, with a shower, with a, the, how do you call this? The, the toilet. The toilet. Itself. Yeah, the toilet itself. <laughs> and in Portugal they, they call casa de banho. Yeah. Would be like a bath, bath house. Yeah, like a place uh, where people take a bath. The problem is that they also have this word in Portugal. But Meaning this, <laughs> banheiro. I put this to, not to be sexist, so I put a woman and a boy. Banheiro, <laughs> the, the guy who stands on the beach, uh, helping people and saving people. But in Brazil, it's called salva vida, like save life. Very logical, yeah. And this uh, might uh, be a problem when you are speaking to me because. Uh, if you are in Portugal and you look for a banheiro, they say go to the beach. <laughs> there are plenty of banheiros in the beach. At the beach, and in Brazil there's no problem. Banheiro is a really nice place for looking for. Uh, this one is a classic one. Yeah, it's a classic. How do you call this in English? Like a lot of people. Why? 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 In Portugal, they call bicha. Okay, no problem so far, but uh, bicha in Brazil means a uh, gay person. In a, a, a non polite way. Non polite way, yeah. And I, I put here, I don't mean to offend nobody, but uh, do you know this guy? Boy George. Boy George. Yeah. Which uh, is very funny because he looks like one, but his name is Boy. And, yeah. and he's a bicha. 
uh, who would be in Brazil. There are no orphans. Uh, he's a great artist. Very useful. But in Portugal, they call this paneleiro. Like someone who sells uh, candy. Yeah? Panela. Uh, panela, obviously. Cooking pots. Panela, cooking pots. Someone who sells cooking pots. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ask me why. Yeah, just a life for it. Well, I think that uh, I have a friend of mine that we, we met in, in Lisbon. It mm -hmm. was the first time that I went there. And uh, and I asked him. So why do we why do we say panele? Well, because maybe they burn the bottom of the. <laughs> so, oh, I don't know. I think maybe this is for jobs. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's being recorded. I don't think I should uh, share this information. <laughs> if you do want to understand, ask him. Uh, where yeah, is that? What about like, bichu mean then in, in northern Brazil? Bichu. 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 Yeah, yeah, okay. Bicho? Yeah, yeah, okay. Bicho? Yeah, yeah, okay. Bicho? Yeah. Yeah. What kind of animal do you like? What, 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 what kind of bicho was uh, supposed to be? Not exactly. Yeah, yeah, there is other meaning for bicho. Back in the old time, my mother, when she wants to address herself to some thoughts, and wants to say, Pô, bicho, que legal! Means, um, <laughs> hi, man, what's happening? It's a kind of vocal. Yes. Yeah, yeah, bicho. Yes. yes. Very common in the south and southeast. Yeah. So, this one. Uh, Suit. Yeah. 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 yeah, we call this ten, the uh, clothing, and in Portugal they say fato. But fato in Brazil can mean two things. In general, it's a fact, yeah? so something that really happened. But in my region, fato is like the the goods and intestines and all this stuff. It's fato. Yeah. So. Uh, might be a problem when you're trying to talk. And uh, mayo and fat bind. Mayo is this kind of piece, like a bikini, but only one piece. Yeah, and they call fat bind, just like the suit to bed. Bus, omnibus, out car. Omnibus, omnibus, omnibus. That's very common word various languages, and out car, um, I don't know why we call this, because this out is not the tall one, which is this L. It's like an automatic car. Yeah, like automatic. But Basically, car every is car is automatic. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make really sense. For you. Yeah, but they call it like this, they just have to respect. <laughs> and this <laughs> is a, <laughs> a very new cell phone, if you want to buy it, I think you can find And we call it cellular. Maybe because of the cells and stuff and the internet system. No, and they no call internet systems. No, and it's because the system of the red of communication is based on cells in the territory. I don't quite understand that technology. That's why I chose this model. <laughs> <laughs> they call it telemorph. <laughs> telemorph. Uh, tele is uh, just uh, from Greek, like distant, and mobile because you can put wherever you want to. Uh, this one, uh, the picture is not very good. <laughs> it's really bad, but this is a slot uh, slot house or slot house abattoir. Something like, where you can buy meat. We can buy uh, butcher. 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 Yeah, butcher. 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 Yeah. Butcher. 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 <laughs> we call this frigorifico in Brazil, and they call talho, probably because uh, talho means uh, a piece yeah, of something. So we can buy pieces of animals. Yeah, but frigorifico also exists in Portugal. It's a uh, fridge, and they call geladeira, like something that turns cold. You get cold. Yeah. Uh, I think this one is the lesson, but I will keep talking for uh, a Yeah. Café da manhã is like the breakfast. The fridge. Any breakfast? <coughs> breakfast. Or, or, also without coffee? With tea? Even yeah. if, you, if you don't drink coffee. Yeah. 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 I think, yeah. uh, yeah. I've been taking uh, four breakfasts without coffee. Actually, yeah. it's even worse because if even if you don't uh, drink any coffee, if you are going to take your breakfast, you say, I have to my cafe. Yes. <laughs> don't drink coffee. Yes. In, in Brazil, yes. don't go to my cafe, let's have a breakfast. So, café da manhã, they go, pequeno almoço, like a little lunch. Uh, I, I suppose there's some historical reason, because in, I think, the 18th century, the 
uh, lunch was a breakfast, and the dinner was a lunch, and there was another uh, meal that they had as a dinner. Yeah. In Brazil, at least, uh, uh, if you read the old books from 18th century, you might find, find this kind of variation. And as I told you, there are some differences. Uh, some some words in Brazil are really impolite, like "cu," which means "ass," uh, and uh, "rabo," which means like "tail." But in Brazil, it's very impolite. Yeah? In Portugal, they use like "as." It was, uh, how do you say this in English, uh, being polite, to refer to the... Buttons? Yeah, like the... the oh, yeah, to the... Your butt? The, yeah, like to the butt, but in a polite form, or an accent. Spot-on? Spot-on, maybe, yeah. So, yeah. for example, in a magazine, they put in Portugal, uh, how to get your butt up, with using rabo. But rabo means tail, and it's very impolite in Brazil. Yeah, well, so do you say Portugal is not that? Uh, I have a cousin who lived in one year in Portugal and he saw in magazines people using Habu. It's a normal word. It's a normal word. It's or, it's in, in Brazil it's not very good. Yeah. Like you're not, you don't refer to your own bottom as Habu. Only if you. And someone else's item. Yeah. 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 It doesn't happen in any case. Yeah? And. Uh, no, I, I didn't want to. Give all the words because I don't know all the words that differ. But uh, these are the, the ones I I thought that would be more important, especially the ones that may give you some trouble, or put you into some trouble. Yeah, please. Well, I encountered a funny way to pronounce foreign, uh, well, first of all, English words uh, ending on uh, consonants. Like, uh, how do you pronounce in Brazil, uh, Brad Pitt? It depends. It depends. <laughs> if you speak English, you can say Brad Pitt. All right. But uh, the Brazilian form is Brad Pitt. Hot dog. <laughs> Hot dog. Hip hop. Hip hop. Yeah. How do you how do you do in Portugal? Facebook. Uh, Maria, do you know this? Uh, maybe the. <laughs> Okay, no, I, I get what you're saying. So what? Okay. Wait. So what's the what's the one after Brad Pitt? Hot dog. 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 If you want to understand why you do this, imagine that. Uh, this is the word hot dog. In Brazil, it's like this. If to those who know Russian, we put the soft sign on. <laughs> so, hot dog. <laughs> yes. And, and you add a vowel also. Yes, actually, basically like this. Yes. And <laughs> yeah. and vowels. Yeah. Hot dog. I, I like the words hot hip hop and rap in uh, Brazilian pronunciation. Which ones? Hip hop and rap. Ah, hip hop is happy. Hip hop like this. I don't like this kind of music. Yeah. Is this hip hop? Yeah, yeah. Hip hop. Huh? And rap. <laughs> Which we speak like it was happy. 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 Um, another very important and very dangerous word, a difference between Portuguese, Portuguese, uh, Luz, Luz and Portuguese and Brazilian Portuguese, is raparilla. Yes, I didn't okay. want to, to write here yeah. just to <laughs> give the respect. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, uh, yes, uh, you have rapaz to young guys. Yeah, I'm a rapaz, I think. <laughs> And uh, as natural, you you need a word to the female young person. So uh, in Brazil, we say it's a moça. If you want to look for it, there's a condensed milk with this name, leite moça. Leite moça. Yeah? Milch mate. The same thing. But in Portugal, they have a word with the same root, which is uh, a parigua. For some historical reasons, rapariga in 
Brazil means uh, a prostitute. A prostitute. Yeah, so it's very common people uh, arrive in Brazil coming from Portugal and uh, I talked to that rapariga and uh, wait, what did she do? <laughs> but she was calling her a prostitute. Yeah, this is a very really dangerous one. Yeah, and there is also a uh, like teenager. Yes, teenager in Brazil we call adolescent. Adolescent, someone who is growing. But they have a word, a very strange word in Portugal, which is uh, <laughs> which also means. Uh, almost would, a kid, yeah? I would uh, say yeah, yeah. from 5 to 10. Uh, ah, yes. Uh, from it's from, uh, kid, yeah. Uh, it's a little bit younger than I thought. Yeah. Uh, but that means prostitute, a male one. Yeah. And it's a, a woman, puta, a female one. And there's a, a, a story. Uh, a com Brazilian comedian spent some time in Portugal. And as he was very famous, the government invited him to make a vaccination or a vaccination, vaccination. vaccination uh, advertisement. And he uh, needed to say all the kids uh, come to take the needle in your bottle. But in port in Europe in Portuguese. And it was like todos os putinhos. <laughs> <laughs> Small children, do they understand the other language? Uh, do the, are there jokes? Uh, uh, well, the uh, to the In Brazil, we have our proper culture, so a Brazilian will laugh, a Brazilian kid will laugh of our jokes, and probably is not laughing at uh, is not laughing at the Portuguese jokes. Yeah. So it's uh, it's very different. Our cultures are completely different. Some people say that the Portuguese are very formal and very. Uh, most people in Brazilian are more relaxed and uh, yeah, more natural people. And some say that. Uh, any other question? Please. I don't know if you were participating in the Facebook discussion. In the, I know him from the Polyglots group on Facebook, but there was a discussion some time ago about language learning materials for Portuguese. And you know, I often find that they cover both. Brazilian and European in one book, which I okay, which I don't I don't care for. I find that too confusing because you're jumping around and all that stuff. But in the, but first of all, I was wondering what you think of that, and second of all, I don't know if other people who have um, explored Portuguese have noticed this, but in, just from looking at um, German books on Portuguese, I see typically a division, um, Brazilianish and I forget and. Portuguese-ish, yeah, and they seem to divide it more than, say, English sources. Yes, yeah, that's true, because uh, uh, there is a vocabulary that's different. The grammar, that if you want to, to teach Portuguese to someone, you, and Brazilian in general, they, in general, they teach what the, the practical things. So I'm not teaching Demi, I'll teach me that, because it's what the person is going to hear on the street, and uh, probably no. talk. And there's a pronunciation thing, which is completely different. Yeah. The rhythm of the language, as I told you, differs uh, a lot. Yeah. So I heard people, oh, I don't like uh, dropping Portuguese because it's too fast. I cannot understand anything. And, but I heard some people, uh, Portuguese, European Portuguese, it's easier to speak. And I thought, yeah, it is easier to speak because European people in general, and Portuguese people, talk according to the grammar. And we talk according to our dialects. 
small dialect we have. Yeah, so for instance, in my state, there is a dictionary to all the expressions we have. Because they differ a lot, the meaning if some, someone comes from the other city, like Sao Paulo or Belo Horizonte, Belo Horizonte yeah, it won't understand, he or she won't, won't understand. Yeah? For example, so, for some, uh, for some vegetables, there are different vegetables. Some vegetables. Two, yeah. three. <laughs> so there's there's some vegetables. Vegetables. The same names with different vegetables that one can kill, the other not. So you can eat one and you can't eat the other. So, uh, in my region, we we had this difference, but the, the name we used to that, that one that's dangerous to eat, people in the south is used to the one they can't eat. So it's uh, kind of difficult to deal with all the differences in Brazil. That's why, probably, that's why there's the Brazilian niche mm -hmm. in Portuguese. -ish. I wish they could do it more in English because it, it would just be so nice to have more consistency. I feel so. I read the learning text and it's always, you know, stepping aside for some exceptions. It's different. Uh, yeah. no, uh, uh, I think and Brazilian Portuguese is already kind of complicated. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You said that Portuguese people speak faster. So my question is, do Brazilian people understand Portuguese people and the other way around? Uh, in general, yes. In general, we do understand. But some people, uh, in some situations, we cannot understand. Uh, for example, if you have things on television or radio, it's very hard to understand uh, for a Brazilian to understand uh, European yes. Portuguese. Yes, but yes. if you don't want with model, you adapt yes. one to yes, another. I think, I think that we have a situation here because uh, many, many Sopolperas and the Brazilian songs and this kind of stuff, many people from Portugal, they love to listen to this. Mm -hmm. So for them, the, the, it sounds more natural to understand Brazilian Portuguese, mm -hmm. but yeah, we don't have this. And there is also the difference, uh, because Portugal also has, uh, uh, has accents. So some people speak uh, faster, some people speak faster. Uh, e a você pode falar da escritora, porque as um, cinco anos atrás tem um compromisso, né? Entre o, a escritora em Portugal e a escritora em no Brasil. Ah, o homográfico. Oh, homograf. Yes. Yes. Uh, the governments are trying to unificate the orthography. So that they refuse it. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's a little bit yeah, but older, but it the end of it, they didn't follow. Yes, everybody follows. We had to do this one for the total. This is interesting. This is what the Portuguese say. They officially say that the Portuguese say that the Brazilians do whatever they want, but then in Portugal, especially in uh, official communication, I'm talking about uh, embassies, and I have experience with that. They have to use the accord of orthography. Mas eles não estão de acordo, porque é fato, fato, ninguém percebe. So, in the, in the professional uh, Portuguese, in the official Portuguese, did you use the normal accord? Mm -hmm. yes. yes, but Portugal has not signed yet. And also, one thing about the problem of the photograph, because I love your speech, and it's interesting that you write the Oshpiro, but ninguém in Portugal diz the Oshpiro. Ah, the Oshpiro, ah, yes. And it's, it's exciting, because if you do write it this way, and for you, for Brazil, this is the Oshpiro. Now, just my own observation has been that in Brazil, that the Accorda has been implemented, and, but in Portugal it hasn't. Yes, uh, I don't have uh, much time But they signed the agreement, they signed the agreement five years ago. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah there is uh, this project to unify all the writing in both uh, Portuguese-speaking speaking countries. That's why we, there's a community nowadays with African countries, with Asian countries, Brazil and Portugal. But uh, since uh, 1998, there's this one of the main uh, <coughs> agreements. And in 2008, and years later, Portugal uh, pronounced it itself to say that it wasn't agreeing with it. But it's very interesting because the language, the language was born in Portugal. But they, uh, they in Portugal weren't agreeing with it. And so we, we had until 2012 to change our uh, school system and everything, and now I have until 2016 to do it. 
And personally, I think we, we're not doing it. It's always, they're, they're going to always give more, give more uh, years and years and years because it, there's no linguistic re uh, reason to do this. It's, everything is political. Yeah? The process in Brazil wants to sell more books in Portugal and in other countries, and that's why that's been good. Uh, I hope that it was useful to you. Contact me, this are uh, where you can find me, Facebook, there's my email, my Skype and my YouTube channel. Uh, I have some videos. I, I don't really I, I don't <laughs> watch them, but uh, you can watch them if you want. Uh, yeah, and that's it. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Really, 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 very much. Uh,